Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I have a couple of things to show you and one of them is going to be this pile of books that are going to be listed at the Etsy store in a couple of days. And I have six of them here. So we will go through, we'll go through these dudes. And then I have a couple other things to show you. Okay, so let me first start with these two. These are approximately the same size. And here we go. Which is about five and three quarter by eight and three quarter. And they both have a similar amount of pages, which is between like 144 to 150, somewhere in there. These two journals do not have um, sewn pages. This one, matter of fact, this day ledger with this gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Uh, it's over at eight. So there's like a letter on the back. And then on the front, we have our label and our, our ledger cover. And then we have this spine here. This one is just all tea stained paper. That is all it is. And there is a little Ex Libris book plate in the back. And then it's got some black end papers. But that's what this guy is. That's what this one is. So um, just, just for sketching, just for journaling, whatever. So there's that one. We have, I've been having some requests for just some, you know, plain, plain, plain. So this one is similar. It has no, no sewn pages, um, but it does have the random pages. So this one is a gorgeous, like a chocolate brown, and it's got a pretty curved spine. And then we have the book plate on the front that says journal. Has slightly little curved edges here. It's, it feels really good. It's a nice, um, it's a nice journal, nice size journal. And on the inside is um, one of my marbled pages that I did. These are the originals. These aren't prints. So these are the original um, marbled papers. And there's the back. And then this guy has the book plate right here in the front. It says Ex Libra, so you can put your name here, and then if lost, kindly return, and you can put your email or a phone number or, you know, some contact information right there if you'd like. But this one does have random pages in it all throughout, um, and the, um, the tea stained papers. This one's, it's pretty cool. I really, I really, really dig this one. And I hope you like it too, but no sewing, just a nice, just a nice random page, no fluff, no muss, no, you know, no nonsense. Okay, there's a little bit of nonsense. There's no nonsense in this one. A little, there's a hint of nonsense in this one, <laughs> but it's a great book. It's just, it's just lovely. And, um, and the marble paper is just kind of, you know, just knock it over the edge. These two, well, all of these books, but these two in particular really do, I think they look old. Um, they look like they've been sitting on a shelf for 150 years. So I hope you like these two. So there's these two guys. Now the rest of the journals do have some sewing on the pages. They're not like incredibly just fluffy and stuff fluff and stuff, but um, they do have some sewing. So here is this one. It is about five by eight and three quarter. It also has around 150 pages. This one has a beautiful blue, um, this is called a Spanish wave marbled paper that I hand marbled. And then there's that one in the back. Uh, the front cover has the Day Ledger label and this beautiful brown cover with a chocolate brown fabric spine. And then in the back, there is a little graphic of, of an old check on the back. And then um, when you open it up, 
same um, Ex Libris book plate here. And then, like I said, this one does have some, let me, let me, let me scoot in a little bit here. This one does have a little bit of sewing um, throughout the book. Several pages are sewn on, but it's not overtly, you know, feminine. There are some little tidbits added here and there. Um, but I mean, mainly this is for, this is for journaling. These are for writing things down, um, you know, putting a picture in here. There are a couple of tuck spots, of course, just to kind of keep some things safe. Um, yeah, so it's a nice big pocket here. So yeah, there is this guy. There is this guy. Love this paper. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I wish I had um, scanned this one before I used it. <laughs> I forgot. Okay. And then we have this guy. And this one is super cool. It, um, it, the graphic is adapted from a real diary written in 1914. So it's, this is a, um, this is really how they did look. And so it's got this beautiful, like a burgundy wine colored cover. And there is the back. I added uh, the imprint of a little bee and some staining and some worn edges. It has this kind of a khaki brown spine. And then in this one, let me get this kind of frame here. This one doesn't have marbled paper. This is a hand stamped um, paper that I made. And then it does also have sewing throughout and some pockets. Um, very similar to the one we just saw. Very similar. Same types of pages. Same uh, similar uh, number of pages, amount of pages. Uh, this one does have some some seam binders ribbon kind of sewn throughout. It's got some little fold outs. Some nice interesting things to look at as you are writing in your book. I, I like to keep it a little interesting, some visual, you know, eye candy to kind of, you know, make each day a little different as you write something down. It's a, it's a different page, it's a new look. Um, some places to tuck some things to keep them safe. You know, you know my deal. And then this one has one of my old cypress or juniper kind of evergreen tree ex libris plates in the back where you write your name up at the top. So there is this beautiful guy. Then we have this one. This one it has a day book. There we go plate on the front and it has been made with this is a, a scrapbook paper by Prima and there is the back beautiful paper it's got this tiny little rosebud it's uh, like a almost like a wallpaper pattern then it's got some text that's kind of been you know like halfway washed away I don't know it's just kind of a neat it's kind of a neat, some neat graphics on there. And then the spine is this kind of this chocolatey, um, distressed brown. This one also has um, some of my uh, hand marbled paper in it. Again, I did not scan this one either. I was not thinking. I was like, I gotta use my paper in a book. And then I forgot to, you know. <sighs> but again, similar in size to, you know, the last one. Um, the page number is almost exactly the same. Um, the Ex Libris plate, this one to random pages, some sewn elements with some pieces of other hand marbled paper. I don't throw that stuff away. Some little, some little pockets that were sewn in. It's got, this has got a kind of a double sewn page with this map flip out. It's got some extra accounting forms, you know. There's a little tuck spot here. Some marbled paper, a scrap. When I cut the, uh, the marble paper for the other book, I just sewed it onto this page for this book. 
and it's got some book pages. It's got this middle, like this file folder, double pocket thing in the middle. It's a little, one of those little quotes from the novel that I went through and cut out. <laughs> uh, here's a pocket here. I just slipped in a little, a little tag. It's a library card. And here's the other side, the other pocket on the side. Some more book pages. There's another little fold out here. I just closed it with a little metal clip. So you can use it as a tuck spot too. You know, a little paper collage with some hand marbled paper and a little piece of scrapbook paper. And a little pocket here and a photograph. And this happens to be a photograph of my grandfather when he was about eight or nine years old sitting there on the beach and I believe this was um, Lake Michigan if I am correct there he's holding his little pup but that was my grandpa Otto <laughs> so I put grandpa Otto and his dad and his uncle and his cousins and their dog <laughs> in this little sewn little pocket right here with um, one of those novel quotes and a little number. And then I, in the back of this one I put, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my name in the back of all of them. I have not finished that yet, but I thought I'd go ahead and film it. And then I put a little wax seal there with a little, a little banner made out of the uh, hand marbled paper. So there is this lovely lady. And then we've got this this little guy, and this one's a little smaller, so this one is like a little bigger than four and a quarter by eight. And this one has, uh, I wrote it down, just a few less pages than those, but honestly, I'll have to, it'll be in the description, and I, I apologize, I forgot to. I forgot to write it down so I could see what I was doing. This one has a um, dictionary page um, on the inside, front and back, little fox and one of the Ex Libris plates. But this one kind of is cool because it's got these file tab pages throughout so you can see the file tabs hanging out and they each have a different label on them. This one has um, sewn pockets with this one has like a little field label in it um, and this is from like a geology um, it was a museum specimen and this was the field label for it and this one of course has the random pages like I like to do it's got some pockets and some stamping and ledger and graph there's another pocket on this side. So here's some more of the little file tab pages. Here's a little flash card sewn pocket. This one says plans. There's some sewn elements on this one. Some book pages and some tiny little ledger accounting forms. Here's another little tuck spot here with a ticket. There's another flash card and another file folder page. Stamping and like a little Franken page. There's some more file folder pages. Another pocket and a little quote from my novel that I tore apart. Um, some more book pages. This one, this one has a lot of interest in it. This one's um, kind of funky. <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was still like recovering from the flu. Like I still like had like a headache every day. And so I would just work at it for like, like 15 minutes of it at a time when I could like stand up straight. <laughs> and so this one, this one came out. It's like, it's like, okay, what did I do yesterday? And I would just, okay, that's what I did. And I would add some more, but I don't know. I, I really like the way it came out and I love the file folder tabs. Um, this one says ideas. This one says lists. This one says plans. And then this one says to do. So there's four, 
sections um, through here with the different with the different um, file folder tabs. There's the back again. And the cover of this book looks like really, really super worn leather, like really super old. It's got the corners added on that match the spine. And then we've got our little notes book plate with some brads. So um, yeah. So even though it's a little smaller than these guys, it's it's really interesting. It's got it's it's it, this is a great size. I do love this size. Um, so yeah. So here are here are the six. They will be going up on the Etsy at my Etsy shop um, on. Um, See, today is Thursday, uh, Tuesday afternoon. So I'm going to say Friday morning. Friday morning. Today is the... Today is the 5th. Oh, I can't do it Friday morning. I won't be here. Thurs Thursday morning. Let's do Thursday morning. <laughs> Let's do Thursday morning. So Thursday morning will be the 7th. The 7th and of June, it is 2018. So in like, you know, the day after tomorrow, I will put these up because I forgot I won't be here Wednesday, uh, Friday morning. So there are these guys. I hope you like them. I'm trying to get these all stacked up over here so I can show you the next thing, the next thing. Okay. So um, a lot of you were asking about my marbled papers that I made. Um, let me grab some here. I did a second um, marbling session the other day. Move all this stuff out of the way. And I, there's no rhyme or reason to the stack of these. It's just, it, it is what it is. Um, but this is what I came up with on my second marbling session. Oh, maybe I should back out a little bit. That's a little close. Woo, woo. Okay, so this one and this one, and there's another dude in here. Here we go, this guy. So these three right here, um, are my attempt, my rudimentary juvenile attempt <laughs> at a, um, a process that is called either sunspot marbling or tiger eye marbling. It is, it is very difficult to do. It is like, it's like a chemistry like experiment. So I am still working on it. This, cause these are not, these are not exactly the way I want them to be, although they did turn out super cool. So do you see how they how they radiate and they kind of look like, um, they're called tiger eyes. Some people call them sunspots and then some call them tiger eyes. But do you see how it radiates from the middle like that? Um, it's a chemical reaction of different things that you add to the paint. And so but I really like the effect, even though they're not exactly what I was looking for. I, nonetheless, I think it's wicked cool and I actually like it. So I did this one in blue with some brown veining and the silver black um, sunspots or tiger eyes. And then this one was done in this real pretty like ochre and this medium green with brown and white and uh, silver, I believe. <laughs> and then and then with the um, silver and black eyes, tiger eyes. So like I said, I really, really, really like the effect. This one was done on a chevron pattern. So there was that. So hopefully we will revisit this and I'll um, I'll get better at doing that. Then we have some feathering and we've got this one and this dude and I will try to keep these all keep these all together. Okay. 
So I did this feather pattern. This one is done in purples and teals and kind of a salmony peachy color. So really, really, really pretty. I really like this color combination. This one was done in like pale teals and silvers and yeah. So um, I didn't lay the paper down exactly right. As you can see, there are some pale lines. These are called hesitation marks. So hesitating, it's, this is not good. It's just not good, just don't do it. So this one, even though I'm gonna use it, you know, it's, it's a fail. <laughs> Um, this one did, did real well. And then I did this one, a nice bright uh, teal and blue and peach and green. And so this one I think came out fairly, fairly well. And so there is this one. So those are the, the, the feathery type patterns. And then this is one of the nonpareils. And this one is done in blue, green, yellow, teal, and then there's a silver, I don't know if you can see it. There is a silver like stripe also going through. It's really hard to pick it up on camera though. So, but there's a silver going through there. Um, this one, I was trying to do like an Italian uh, hair vein kind of a thing. Not exactly like I thought it was going to come out, but kind of neat nonetheless. It kind of looks like marble. And so this one has like a burgundy and black and gold. And then there is a hint of white in there as well. It came out pretty cool. The gold, the gold does shimmer somewhat. In real life, it shimmers more. But this one came out kind of cool. It kind of looks like super old Italian marble. This is like a rainbow, like a chevron or gelgit, which um, is a chevron, but in Turkish. <laughs> and then I did a speckle pattern over the top. So this one turned out, I really like this one. I think it's vibrant and um, I don't know. I like this one a lot. I like it. This is another rainbow um, that I did. It looks better close up than it does far away. So this one um, came out fairly well, Fair, fairly well. Here's another one of these Spanish waves that I did. This one's a nice brilliant blue, a nice brilliant color. Um, I'm, I'm proud of this one. I really like I really like this one. I love this pattern. It's one of my very, very favorites. It's super similar to um, the paper I did in, in this book. This one's a little lighter, but um, this one, um, I used some different colors and it came out with some more brilliant, some brilliant tones, but I really, really, really dig um, this paper. And there's only one. That's the thing about hand marbling. You, you, you get one, man. You only get one. Um, this one did not come out exactly the way I thought it was going to. I still think it's kind of cool. It's done in purples, purples and browns and whites. Um, I still think it's cool, but I wanted to show it to you anyway. No secrets, man. Um, oh, here's another one of those eyeball things. Well, tiger eye. Here's another one. So this one is a teal one. It, like a teal Gelgit with the with the little tiger eye sunspots on top. And then this one was done on blue artist paper and it's got black and gold and copper and white. And then I did a couple more of these black and gold and gray on the black artist paper. And so you can see the gold shimmering there. And this is kind of a, a heavier swirl on these. I really like these. I like the black paper. This one, oh, this is my mustard and ketchup. So I didn't like this one. I didn't like this one at all. I, I think it looks like mustard and ketchup swirled up on a plate. So yeah, anyway, fail. Um, and then this one is done on the green 
artist's sketch paper and it's got silver and black and gray. So I think it came out kind of cool. I kind of like this one too. Okay, so what I wanted to tell you is, is that the marbled papers along with um, um, my some of my eco printed pages, um, I've turned them into two digital kits and so they each have 10 pages to each of the kits. So there's, there's a kit with 10 marbled pages and there's a kit with 10 eco printed pages and they are available at my Etsy store right now for immediate download. If you are interested in those, I printed some out. I had some pretty parchment paper and this is Southworth. I got this at Office Depot. Um, I'm sure you can find it on Amazon as well. It's just their ivory 24 pound. It's made for lasers or ink jets. Their par parchment paper. So there it is if you want to look it up. And I just printed some of the eco, some of the pages, just a couple of the pages. And I think it looks kind of cool even on parchment paper. And then when you turn it over, then of course it's still, you know, it's kind of, you know, it looks old on the back too. I like printing on parchment. It has a nice effect. Um, this is one of the pages that I printed out on the parchment. This is the one, one of the ones that I did last time. It's the gold vein one. And then I printed that um, kind of that teal feathery one on the parchment. So if you wanted to print these out and use them for um, like end sheets in, in a book, then um, this weight of paper would be great to use for end sheets and papers in your books. So just saying. And they are 300 DPI. Um, I printed these out on eight and a half by 11, but if you have a bigger printer, um, you should be able to upsize these a little bit if you needed a bigger sheet of paper because they are 300 DPI. You could enlarge them um, actually quite a bit more and it wouldn't lose quality. So just wanted to let you know. But you know, you guys are welcome to resize them however you feel you want to. I don't care, I don't care. And a lot of people also ask if I allow my digitals to be used in things that you intend on selling. And that is a wholehearted yes. Please use my digital kits in your journals, your mixed media, your albums, your whatever it is that you intend to sell. Um, I, I, it's totally cool with me. You print out what you want. You use these in your artwork for sale. The only thing I ask is that you do not sell the digital files, you know, don't sell them the digital files. And then also don't like mass print these and then sell, sell these. Do you know what I'm saying? Like don't print out my stuff and, you know, sell it as a kit. So don't sell the digitals as a digital and don't, don't like mass print something and then sell them. Just use them, print them out and use them in something. And that's, that's a okay. Nothing wrong with that. Somebody asked and I thought, well, maybe I should, maybe I should say. <laughs> oh, and another thing is um, every once in a while, I'll get a convo from a person at Etsy and um, they have inadvertently made um, a purchase and they weren't logged in to their account. So it like, it went, it went through as like a, a guest, you know, a guest account or a guest purchase. Um, if you're, if you're going to buy a digital download from anybody, I suggest that you be logged into your account before you purchase it. Because if you are logged in as a guest, you, you will have a hard time <laughs> finding those files again, because if you're logged into your account, you just go to, you know, your, your little account up on the top right of the page and you click on your little face and it pops down a box and you just click purchases and reviews and all of your digital downloads, all of them are in there and you can download, even if you bought it last year, you can still download it again if your computer crashed or you need to download it again, whatever. 
But if you are if you are not logged into your account and you check out as a guest, then you can't get back to that. You can't log in as a guest anymore. You know what I'm saying? So then it's like you get the e- you may get the email saying, "Hey, you purchased something." But the kit does not come in the email. It just says, "Hey, you can go download your kit." And so then you're like, then you go back to Etsy and you log in, you're like, "Well, where's my kit?" Well, it's not attached to your account. So then you have to contact Etsy and they can combine it for you. They can merge it for you. I can't do that. I don't have that capability. Um, So just long story short, long story long, long story made rambling and even longer than it needed to be, just log into your account. Or if you don't have an account, just make one before you purchase um, anything. It's just a safer way to do it so that you can keep track of your stuff, you can access your stuff, that kind of thing. Um, Another thing, um, and this goes for Etsy stores across the board, if you're going to go to an Etsy store to purchase something and you think that there might be like several other people that want the same thing as you do at the same time, there are some tricks. So before the item is going to go up for sale, go to your account, make sure all your info is correct. So your contact info, if you've put in your your payment info, make sure everything is correct. And then when the time comes and that item is listed, when you go to that page where it's listed, instead of clicking add to cart, click buy now that bypasses a couple of steps that add to cart will add. So if you click buy now, then you can go, it's just straight takes you to the checkout process. And if your info is correct, it's like click, 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 you're done. But if you add it to cart first, then you got to go to your cart and it shows you everything and you got to, you know, you review it and then it's just a couple of extra steps. And if you think an item is going to go in a matter of seconds and you don't have the time for those extra steps, just do a little preliminary, um, you know, work and make sure all your information is correct. And then that way you can just buy now and then click, click, you're done. Does that make sense guys? Because a lot of times, you know, several people can have the exact same thing in their cart, okay? They can have the exact same, you know, whatever it is, you know, it's tweezers. And there's five people that have these tweezers in their cart. And whoever it is that gets through the checkout process first gets the tweezers. And the tweezers leave the other carts. And that's very sad, right? That's very, very sad. Um, and she cute, they're cute tweezers. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that some of you are new to Etsy and it's kind of a learning curve. It's kind of a, you know, but there are some tricks and if you have any questions, just ask and I will, I will try to answer them as I can. Okay. I've talked long enough. I've talked long enough. So, um, I will let you all go for today. There's going to be a journal with me coming up very soon and another DIY coming up very soon as well. And yeah, so I'll see you. I'll see you super soon, super, super soon. I hope everybody is having a great week and I hope you're staying cool or warm wherever it is you are. And um, yeah, thanks guys. Big love from me and I'll see you real soon. Bye guys.